Welcome to the 2022 Mandatory Athletic Meeting. My name is Peggy Brown, and I'm the Athletic Director here at DSHA. This fall marks my 35th year as Athletic Director at DSHA, and I'm very excited for the upcoming athletic season. I'm very proud of our athletic program and know that if everyone pulls in the same direction and is supportive of the coaches and student athletes, great things will happen. I challenge each of you to support each other to treat each other with respect, and to be kind to one another this year. Before we begin, I ask Helena Cesars, President of the Student Athletic Advisory Council, to begin our meeting with prayer. Helena. Let's begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, let me play well but fairly. Help me to learn something that matters once the game is over. Let competition make me strong but never hostile. Always let me help my opponent up. Never catch me rejoicing in the adversity of others. If I know victory, allow me to be happy. If I am denied, keep me from envy. Remind me that sports are just games. If through athletics I set an example, let it be a good one. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. I would now like to introduce Doug Correa, president of the Parents Athletic Association, to say a few words about the PAA and our only fundraiser of the year, which is our annual golf outing, which will take place on September 9th. Duck? Hello, everyone. My name is Duck Correa. I am the proud parent of a recent DSHA grad, a junior Lauren Correa, and the 2022-23 Parent Athletic Association president. I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you, especially the first time family, who are new to our DSHA community. I just want to take a few minutes to update you on the DSHA Parent Athletic Association, also known as PAA. Before I begin, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Mrs. Seeger Braun, our athletic directors, for her hard work and effort for all our athletic teams. The DSHA athletic program is highly respected throughout the state and that is directly a reflection of her dedication and years of experience. Our athletic program consistently achieves a high level of success and yields numerous state championship titles, state participant and sectional finalists and conference finalists. Now, just a few things on the PAA. The PAA is DSHA Booster Club and such provides funding and support for our students and athletes who participate in any of our DSHA team. Annually, over 65% of the entire school body participates in our sport. The PAA is running by a board of athletics parents that represent each sport, such as myself, swimming and softball. With your assistance, we raise money and in turn, we provide fundings to support our team beyond the school's budget. Some examples include funding technology updates and strength conditioning program, which are provided to all the SHA students. Purchasing new team equipment, warm-ups, and gear for our teams as needed, requested by our coaches help send our coaches to clinics and sponsor guest speaker for our Student Athletic Leadership Summit. Providing thank you gifts for all the coaches at the end of the school year. Finally, we are particularly proud to point out that throughout the fundraising effort of the PA over the past several years, our board was able to donate $150,000 to the athletic training room. And this past year, we were able to give the soccer team a new portable team shelter and the rugby team a new portable team tent. The PAA has two means of generating funds that are required to support our athletic program. First, we encourage in every family to become a member of the PAA. The one-time annual cost is $25 per family and the funds would directly support our athletic students. For the upcoming school year, we are looking for 100% membership 
from our families. You should receive a PAA membership enrollment form in the email packet. Second, our main source of funds and the only fundraiser the PAA runs in the annual DSHA athletics, social, and golf outing. I know we have all had to send, sell something in the past year for fundraising, but we don't have to do that anymore. Instead, all of you need to do is come and support. This year's golf outing and social will be held at University Club on Friday, September 9th. Details are available on the DSHA website. This is our 27th annual event. This is the fifth year we are holding the event at University Club. The golf outing is limited to the first 144 players to register. We generally come very close to selling out the outing, so consider signing up as early as possible. The outing is scramble format, so the emphasis is having fun while we raise money for our student athletes. For serious golfer, you can choose to play your own ball. If you have a group, that's awesome. Or if you just want to sign up, we will help you put a group together for you. For the non-golfer out there, the social part of the post-golf dinner portion of the event. So if you are not a golfer or just can't play during that day, please consider joining us for dinner portion of the evening. The social is a great way to talk with our coaches, meet new families, and see our old friends. The event also features silent auction with great items for bid. How can you support the PAA golf outing? If you were wondering, there are several ways. One, play or come for dinner. Commit to join golf outing planning committee. Volunteer to help during our outing as we need many volunteers there at the outing. Donate your daughter's team whole sponsorship, each team sponsorship a whole. Your sports liaison will cover this at the parents meeting at your daughter's participant sports. Sign up for many sponsorship opportunity. If you or your business would like to help underwrite the event, there is a multiple sponsorship levels available. Sponsorships are the real key for the success for this fundraiser. Please contact Sarah Zander or John or Mary Allen Krieger for more information. Donate an auction item. We always will to take experiences, sports or concert tickets, golf related item, etc. If you are interested in any of these you can call or email Sarah Zander, which is Z-A-N-D-E-R, or John Krieger, K-R-U-E-G-E-R. -E -E you can find their contact information on the DSHA website. Thank you, and you have a wonderful day. Bye. Once again, this year, we turn our focus to good sportsmanship. Helena Cesars, president of the Student Athletic Advisory Council, is going to share some thoughts on sportsmanship. Helena? Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Helena Cesars, and I am the president of the Student Athletic Advisory Council. Today, I would like to briefly reiterate the importance of appropriate fan and athlete behavior at all DSHA sporting events. Good sportsmanship is a defining feature of the DSHA athletic department and a characteristic we hope all athletes and representatives of our school are always striving to maintain. To the athletes, Sports can be difficult, we may not always like the call a referee makes, and we certainly all enjoy winning. However, please always remember to maintain the highest level of respect for your teammates and your coaches, the opposing team and their coaches, and the officials. Poor sportsmanship not only reflects on your own character, but also that of your team and our school. Continue to display a positive image of DSHA both on and off the field, 
for sportsmanship is a huge aspect of every sport that never takes a day off. To the parents, your behavior at sporting affects your daughter and her teammates more than one would think. Over 50% of DSHA students surveyed admitted that negative behavior of their parents or their teammates' parents has impaired the performance during games or competitions. Parents, please remember that first and foremost, this is just a game, and second, that the girls play to have fun and to improve upon their skills. Inappropriate behavior by parents hinders progression and takes enjoyment away from the sport. Make sure to always keep in your mind your role and the boundaries associated with being a spectator. At sporting events, there are four different roles each person can have. Coach, player, official, spectator. But you cannot fulfill more than one of these roles at a time. Honor your role and allow others to fully meet the responsibilities as well. What sportsmanship ultimately comes down to is being respectful. For both parents and students, sportsmanship means respecting others, respecting your role as a representative of DSHA, and most importantly, it means having respect for the game. When you walk onto that field, step foot onto that court, dive into that f pool, tee off on that first hole, or in the case of parents, sit down on the bleachers, always make sure that whatever happens, you will walk away knowing that you made your team, DSHA as a whole, and most importantly, yourself or your daughter extremely proud. Please help us work together to maintain a positive atmosphere at all DSHA sporting events. We look forward to another amazing and successful year of athletics. Thank you. Welcome to the PowerPoint portion of the mandatory athletic meeting. In this presentation, I will highlight some of the important athletic policies and procedures you will need to know. Following this presentation, you will be asked to read through the entire athletic policies and procedure booklet to gain a deeper knowledge and understanding of this information. The first thing we'll talk about is the mission, vision, and core values, which is listed in the policy and procedure booklet. The mission and vision align closely with the mission and vision of DSHA. And in particular, the core values in the athletic department include academic success, athletic excellence, teamwork, leadership, service, and sportsmanship. And those are the things we're working on with our various teams. And by participating in athletics, we're hoping that these are the values that you'll be gaining. Next, we'll talk about the philosophy of athletics. The athletic program exists to support and advance the overall mission of DSHA, which is to develop the whole person. We believe that making a team is an honor that an athlete earns with hard work and dedication as well as the development and refinement of her God-given talents. At the varsity level, one of the main goals of the varsity team is to be as competitive as possible. So in most game situations, not all players will have the opportunity to play. In contrast, the JV and freshman levels are more developmental in nature, and coaches are gonna make a greater effort to promote participation in games by all team members. One thing that you need to keep in mind is that playing time at the high school level is never equal among players each game, but freshman and JV coaches are going to make an effort to make sure that everybody gets into every game. The starting dates and tryout dates are listed in the athletic policies and procedure booklet for you to take a look at. For those sports that do have cuts or tryouts, they generally last three to five days, and you are expected to be at all tryout dates. Another thing to remember is that all cuts from athletic teams are final. You can certainly ask the coach for an explanation of skills that need to be improved, but there is no appeal process. So that's important to keep in mind. When you become an athlete at DSHA, there are certain responsibilities that you will need to um, have. And we believe that participating in athletics is a privilege, not a right. So the first responsibility you have is to your school. You need to participate for your athletic team to the best of your ability and to be a good role model. You assume a leadership role when you're on an athletic team. So please make good choices at all times. A second responsibility is to yourself, <clears throat> to grow as a person of character. As a student athlete, you have a choice every day regarding the attitude you'll 
embrace for that day. Please choose wisely and get the most out of your high school athletic experience. Do everything you can to be physically, mentally, and spiritually healthy. And a third responsibility is to your academics. Academic success must always come first. Make sure you are doing what it takes to be the best student you can be. Not only are there responsibilities for the athletes, but there are also responsibilities for parent and guardians. <clears throat> and the first is to be positive with your daughter. Let her know that she is accomplishing something simply by being part of the team and that every role on the team is important and contributes to the team's success. Encourage your daughter to work hard to reach her potential and contribute to the team's efforts. Third, be supportive of the coach rather than critical. If you criticize the coach in front of your daughter, she has a difficult choice to make between her loyalty to you and her loyalty to the team and her coach. This can only negatively affect her ability to do her best. Next, cheer in a positive manner for all team members. Everyone is really trying to do their best. And last, please emphasize being a good sport with your daughter. Win or lose, you and your daughter must show respect to the opponents, officials, and in addition to teammates and coaches. Next, I just wanted to touch on hazing. And first of all, I need you to know that DSHA does not condone hazing in any way, shape, or form. Please contact a coach or athletic director immediately if you feel like hazing is taking place on your team. Social media. It is an expectation of all athletes to refrain from using all forms of social media to negatively rep one, represent oneself as a spokesperson for DSHA and the sport she represents. At no time should an athlete demean or threaten DSHA, DSHA representatives, coaches, teammates, officials, or the opposing team. Such behavior may be cause for disciplinary action on the part of the school. Next is transportation. DSHA does not provide transportation to athletic contests or practices within the Milwaukee metropolitan area. We ask that parents help provide transportation for their daughters or help arrange for transportation of their daughters to these events. Parents are responsible for knowing how their daughter is being transported to and from athletic events and who is driving. DSHA will provide bus or, trans, bus or van transportation to any contest one hour or more travel time away from DSHA or any destination that the athletic director and coach feels we need to provide transportation or not provide transportation if the athletic director and coach do not feel it's necessary. DSHA does comply with our insurance policy that prohibits the use of 15 passenger vans. We will only use 10 passenger vans or fewer. Please note that when DSHA does provide bus or van transportation, we are responsible for your daughter. Thus, a bus or van is provided for a team. Every member of the team must take the bus to the athletic contest and then back to DSHA after the contest. No exception will be granted unless there's an extreme emergency, which is talked about prior to leaving for a trip. We strongly suggest that you, as parents, know who is driving your daughter, and we encourage parents to drive rather than students. Next, it's important for all student athletes to have adequate health insurance coverage in case of accident or injury. No cost of medical conveyance or treatment will be borne by DSHA or any of its employees or representatives. The key to a good athletic program is communication. The athletic department at DSHA places great emphasis on communication between coaches, athletes, and parents. If questions or problems occur, it's important to discuss them as soon as they happen so misunderstandings and hurt feelings do not occur. The proper order of which to discuss problems or concerns is as follow. First, bring your concerns to the coach. 
Your daughter should be encouraged to sit down and discuss any problems with the coach. This is a skill we need to encourage our athletes to acquire. Secondly, if your daughter is still not satisfied, a meeting with the coach, parents, and athletes should be scheduled. If you feel the problem still exists after a meeting with the coach, a meeting with the athletic director, coach, parents, and athletes will be held. If the problem still has not been resolved or at the discretion of the athletic director, a meeting with the principal, athletic director, coach, parents, and athletes will be held. Please know that we feel most problems can be solved by meeting with the coach. You should always feel free to discuss with your daughter's coach any concerns or questions you may have. It is, however, appropriate to set up a meeting with the coach to discuss your concerns in a private setting. It is never appropriate to approach a coach during practice, immediately before a game, or immediately after a game. This is the time the coach needs to concentrate on coaching. Issues that are inappropriate for a parent to discuss with a coach include playing time, team strategy, play calling, or other student athletes. If for some reason you're unable to contact your daughter's coach to set up a meeting, please contact the athletic director. Next, we'll talk about uniforms. DSHA does provide all basic uniforms for the athletic teams. The uniforms, warm-up jackets are only to be worn for games, not around school or on the weekends. Um, please wash and return all pieces of your uniform, warm-ups, jackets, everything, according to the instructions and return them within five days of the end of your season. Team travel. A lot of teams do some extra travel outside of the normal conference schedule, and we need you to be aware that fees may be charged for team travel during the season, in addition to the participation, participation fee charged for each team. In the case where athletic travel is subsidized by parents, all tuition fees and other financial obligations to DSHA must be current in, our, in order for the student to participate in athletic travel. Our athletic trainer at DSAJ is Annie Oliveris from Freighted and Medical. Her training hours are Monday through Friday, 2 to 6 p.m. And she's also in the training room on Mondays and Fridays from 11 to 1, which is during lunch. We strongly encourage everyone to get a baseline concussion testing, and you can schedule that with Annie. And every athlete should have a, a baseline concussion test on file, and she will let you know when those are available to schedule. Next, we'll talk about strength and conditioning. DSHA does provide two strength and conditioning coaches. They are Coach Calhoun and Coach McKeever, and they will work with students, student athletes in season and out of season. Their hours are Monday through Friday, three to six, and there is generally a um, schedule posted on the door. And we really encourage the girls to take advantage of using the fitness center um, to you know, help them in their training. Next, we'll talk about dual participation in athletics. What that really means is that an athlete can only be involved in one school-sponsored athletic team each season. You may not try out for an athletic team, make the team, and then quit to join another team. So you can only participate in one thing each season. Non-DSHA and club sports. We understand that student athletes frequently participate in sports outside of those offered at DSHA. However, DSHA does expect our student athletes' commitment to DSHA teams to be the student athletes' first priority should a conflict arise. Coaches must be made aware of potential conflicts well in advance, and students who choose to participate in non-school team events should expect to face some kind of consequence as decided upon by the coach if they miss a DSHA practice or game. Multi-sport athletes versus sport specialization. DSHA encourages and promotes student athletes to participate in multiple sports at DSHA. Research has suggested that athletes who participate in multiple sports 
lower their risk of injury from overuse. If you play more than one sport, you work more muscles, which improves balance and symmetry. Playing multiple sports helps prevent mental and emotional burnout and keeps things interesting. In addition, it allows you to work on different teams with different coaches and teammates, which help you grow as a person while representing your school. So we really encourage you to play multiple sports while you're at DSHA. National Letter of Intent Signing Days. DSHA will hold three signing days each year in November, April, and February. Only athletes who currently play for a DSHA team will be recognized. The student athlete must inform the athletic director at least two weeks prior to the signing date her intentions to sign at school. The last portion of our meeting will deal with the athletic code. Please take time to read the athletic code over carefully. It is in effect 365 days, not just during your season. Any violation should be reported immediately to the athletic director. Everything in this code is illegal for you to be doing, but we want your promise in writing that you will follow these rules. Please remember, it is a matter of honesty and integrity that you are agreeing to follow these rules because you are signing your name today saying you will. If you choose to violate the athletic code, it reflects a lack of integrity and is a reflection of your character. The athletic code in is, is in effect 365 days a year, not just during your season. The first portion of the athletic code deals with alcohol, drugs, tobacco, and vaping. Athletes are strictly prohibited from use, possession, preparation of, sale, or distribution of alcohol, tobacco, vaping, performance enhancing substances, or drugs, or being under the influence of alcohol, controlled substances, intoxicants, altering substances, or substances that are represented as a drug or intoxicant, as well as in possession of drug or vaping paraphernalia. The consequences for violation of the alcohol, drugs, tobacco, and vaping portion of the athletic code is the first violation is a four contest suspension unless the athlete or parent turns the athlete in prior to the school having knowledge of the violation. If so, it may be reduced to a two game suspension as well as an AODA assessment. Second violation is a 365 day suspension from the time of the violation and an AODA assessment. And the third violation is permanent suspension from the athletic program. The next portion of the athletic code deals with personal conduct and truancy. An athlete involved in misconduct for example, vandalism, theft, insubordination, bullying, hazing, etc., shall be suspended from athletics. A student charged with or convicted of a felony shall, upon the filing of a felony charges, become ineligible for, for all further participation in athletics until the courts consider the sentence served. Consequences for violation of personal conduct and truancy include first violation is a Ford contest suspension, second violation 365 days suspension from the time of violation, and third viol violation permanent suspension from the athletic program. The next portion of the athletic code deals with academic requirements. The minimum GPA at each grading period is a 1.67 or above, and no more than one failing grade and no incompletes. Fall eligibility is based on second semester of the previous year. So all incoming freshmen will be eligible this fall, and those that are returning to school, your GPA will be based on second semester of last school year. Unexcused absences. This is one portion of the athletic code we deal with pretty much on a daily basis. 
Um, we check attendance every day, so we want you to be aware of that. So student athletes must be in class the entire day to compete in a contest that evening. I just want to repeat that. Student athletes have to be in school the entire school day to compete in a contest that evening. And student athletes must be at school by 1030 to practice after school. As I said, we check attendance every day and we let coaches know when the girls don't meet those requirements. Any exception to those must be cleared with the athletic director at least the day prior to the absence. For example, if you're going to miss because you have a dentist appointment, a funeral, doctor's appointment, those things just need to be cleared the day before and we can take care of that. Thanks for watching this video. I look forward to working with all student athletes and their parents during the upcoming athletic season. You will now move on to read some important information followed by completing all of the required paperwork. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or concerns, and I just want you all to have a really great season.